Hello, Jose Bo. Bonjour, and welcome to Planet of the Climates. POTK is a ClimaDAO podcast bringing you the latest information and insight into the world of climate action. Klima is a blockchain protocol backed by carbon credits that gives people a chance to fight climate change as a collective. Klima sits at the intersection of blockchain, climate science, and finance, so there's no shortage of great topics for us to explore. My name is Phaedrus, and I'll be your host on this adventure. I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Rekuman, as we discuss the latest Klima news and connect you with the biggest and brightest names currently exploring this space. So today we're chatting with Takeshi from Senkusha. Let's jump right into it. So today we're joined by Takeshi Suzuki, co-founder and COO from Senkusha. Senkusha is a Web3 platform on a mission to empower early stage artists and athletes by raising funds to support their careers. They combine an intimate fan experience with investing, allowing everyone to get involved and help talented people unleash their full potential. Senkusha is also one of our latest Klima Infinity partners, so we're thrilled to have you join us, Takeshi. Just to get things started here, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe your personal background, your business story, anything you'd like to share about your journey? Well, sure, I'd love to. Thanks for having me on here as well. Awesome to meet you guys. So I'm 24 years old. I started off studying medical science at the University of Auckland. So a bit of a career change. As I was studying, I kind of got led into the startup space and got more and more involved in it and kind of got mentored by uh, someone in the startup space, the CEO of a VC firm. And then it kind of just got me more and more involved seeing other startups, how they worked. And fast forward to this year, I was like, okay, like this is something that I'm going to really pursue and got involved with my co-founder Zephing and Terry and we started Senkusha together. <laughs> so took the plunge and I stepped away from my role and, and, and jumped into Senkusha on this mission. And I guess a little bit more about me personally was I'm a boxer. I'm super passionate about business and really excited to be on this journey now. Yeah, that's really cool. So, I mean, just off the cuff here too, it sounds like you've got an incredible background and incredible experience for such a young age there too. So from boxing to, you know, med school and all of this stuff, I'm curious, like, what do you think you've drawn on, like in terms of a toolkit that you brought into this journey or this venture with uh, Senkusha? I think I've been very fortunate with the people that I have been around and just like product managers and people that are so strategic, not just in life, but in how they approach um, whatever they're doing in life in terms of their business. And so I think a lot of that influence has helped me with being a lot more experienced with the strategy side of things. So I think that's definitely a positive to bring into Senkusha, as well as, you know, with university and and business in general, I think you learn a lot about networking and, and just you know, working with people and, and I think, yeah, that's definitely what, what I would bring to Senkusha would be the, the business strategy and obviously execution and, and, and the people side of the business for sure. For those who are listening, like Senkusha is actually really about crowdfunding the next upcoming distinguished like artists, right? Music industry, which is very interesting because why didn't you go towards like, you know, up and coming boxer? Curious, like why music and not like boxing that something that you're very familiar with so obviously you know my background was more on the athlete side of things like you're saying and i think you know that's really where same with zephing he used to be a a professional swimmer but you know circumstances such as funding was obviously a huge problem once you get of age you need to be able to hire a team and all this all this kind of training and and there's a lot of expenses on that and he was unable to continue because of that and you know, I've seen that in my life as well with, you know, my mum was a professional show jumper and she was offered a spot in the Olympics, couldn't afford to go either. Same with my brother. Yeah, I feel like I've just seen it a lot with, I guess you would say that talent is wasted in a sense where you can't, you know, people aren't able to pursue these things just because of simply funding side of things. So that's kind of the very, very core of where Senkusha started from. And then we looked at and did, I guess, you know, obviously some research and like, how would we solve that problem? And obviously, there's a huge problem in the music industry at the moment, right? So we're not actually focusing on any athletes at the moment. 
we are all focused on musicians and we will be for the next year or two, I think, really hone in and, and solve that problem, offer as much value in that space as possible. And then, you know, as once we've got that down, move into some other spaces. So right now we're, we are focused on the music industry just because I think that was a much better target to start it just because of how the music industry is at the moment. So what I'm hearing here is definitely for the next two years itself, you're going to start uh, in the music industry and try and make a dent there before you actually move on to probably other industry, like for example, like swimming, boxing or athletes in general, right? That That's right. We just want to be a platform where talented people can come and raise funds they've got fans that want to invest in their career and anyone should be able to do that i think that's not just something that happens in the music industry i think you know music industry at the moment it's definitely like i said a lot of opportunity there but i think in the future thinking you know five five years down the track ten years down the track we'll be in a position where technology that is out there and uh, the way things are going i think we'll be in a place where we can do that same process for anyone even as the podcast, right? Like you, you guys are talented in your own right as well. And, and people, maybe people want to invest in that. And it's literally can be used in any scenario. Very cool. And we've kind of eased into you telling us all about Sankusha. They're like one little bit at a time here. And maybe for our listeners too, they might be familiar with some other, you know, platforms or solutions. And, you know, just one that jumps to mind for me is like Patreon. But I'm sure, you know, Sankusha has a different approach there. So what does make Sankusha different compared to like Patreon or Kickstarter or some other things that, you know, athletes and artists might do to try to raise funds and, uh, you know, kind of kickstart their career. I love Kickstarter. I think that's, and, and Patreon, I think that's, they're great platforms and they've done a really good job. Obviously, the one issue there is the problem with, it's a one-way value prop, right? Kickstarter offers a one-way, the artist gets funding and it's more on a charitable basis. There are some, you know, sometimes artists will offer like, I don't know, maybe a little bit of merch or something like that, but it is a one-way value prop. Music labels is obviously another aspect where all artists can get funding, but that's obviously only offered to a yeah, very select few. And, you know, artists have to give up 50 to 80% of equity. They have to pay back capital that they took in the first place a lot of the time. And they have to give up creative freedom, right? So that's the downside of, I guess, of the music label side of things. Then you've got, I don't know, this is probably a bit of a joke, but the, the streaming side of things for, for, to get some funding, I guess. But, you know, if you if you get maybe a couple million streams a, a, a month, then, you know, you'd be able to probably pay yourself like a an average wage. <laughs> so it's usually measured in like pennies, pennies per thousands of views or downloads, right? Or yeah, it's like, I think Spotify is like a million streams is worth between anywhere between a thousand dollars and eight thousand dollars. So, um, and self funding is one as, uh, a way as well. But, you know, obviously time is a huge cost there. So I think Sincusha solves each problem of those. So that's how I'd say that we're, yeah, definitely different. We don't offer our services on an equity basis. We give a hundred percent of the funds raised to artists. And it doesn't cost the artist to use our platform at all. So there's no barriers there. And obviously right now we are actually picking and choosing who we're working with. But in six months time, the platform will be open to everyone. So accessibility will not be a problem. And I think with solving the Kickstarter problem as well, where supporters aren't getting any benefits in return, I think we're, we're definitely solving that problem as well. So, I mean, you're kind of alluding to the, you know, the blockchain and Web3 side of things there too. How important or how central is that to the Sankusha platform and the offering there? What we do is not possible without, or it would be very, very difficult. And I think that's why it hasn't been done yet before lock, blockchain was, you know, here. And so I think, yeah, Web3 blockchain NFTs is uh, absolutely pivotal. You know, you, you early on, you did say that you have done a lot of research. So... Just curious, like, you know, what are the trends that are coming up that you see in the market, in the space that's happening right now? People are just realizing, I think, what is what is possible in the space. And I think that's really awesome. The narrative uh, of personal ownership and, you know, control and responsibility are, are, are becoming so prevalent in the space. So I think that is... The trend and the ethos, I guess, of, of Web3, and I think that's that's beautiful. In the trend side of things, I guess, for a bit more around what we're doing, I think 
I've seen a lot of new companies popping up in the last few months. It'll be interesting. I think it's a bit early for the trend side of things. We're still honing in on being able to offer value. Obviously, we know that the problem is funding, right? And I think we have a huge value proposition for artists and investors, but offering that and the right value is is the most important part, right? The vehicle for that is absolutely vital. So being able to you know, hone in on that even more and understand that more is is where we're going to see the future, I guess, the trend, you know, who can do that the, the best. Yeah, that is the million dollar question, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so you did mention in the case of Sankusha, you actually get NFTs when you support a particular artist. Maybe you can share a little bit more, like what does this NFT entails? You know, if you were to come to us and be like, you know, I really want to work with you guys, we would look at you know where your career could benefit the most from funding and write out a list of, of things that are necessary to get that growth from your career and then look at how much funds we need to raise for that and then create a project around it, how many NFTs, at what price. And then we'd look at you know what kind of op- benefits do you want to offer for that? that. That's where, I guess, answering your question is, is really up to the, um, to the artist. We give creative freedom to them. If they want to Like our first artist, he offers like live show tickets. He gives signed merch and all this. And he also does something really cool that I like, which is uh, if you hold a certain amount, you get your name in the credits of his music videos, which I think is really awesome. I think, you know, as a fan, like if I could uh, do that for, you know, I'm a a fan of grime music. So if I could get my name in in the credits of like Skepta's music video or something, I'd be stoked. (laughs) <laughs> so I think offering cool, unique things like that. And I think there's a lot of opportunity as well for even other artists to invest in, in these artist NFTs because, you know, people that work with us can can offer things like, I guess, uh, studio time or something, right? You listen in on a session that going into the session at this time with this person, yeah, you can you can come and follow us and, and join and listen in and, and learn and stuff like that or one-on-ones. And there's, there's really infinite possibilities with what the NFT can offer. And I think, you know, we kind of look at it as a stock of the artist, right? As yeah, more fans follow this artist, they're going to be become more and more exclusive and more sought after and rises with the, you know, the growth of a, of an artist. So yeah, there's a lot of creative freedom for, for artists to choose what they want to offer. That's very cool. So if, if somebody got on board early, I guess, and they were like, you know, a, a Gen 1 supporter of an artist or something, they could have, they'd have the exclusivity of having a much more limited NFT. 100%. And a cool little thing, extra benefit, I think is quite cool is uh, you get some people that are like very early, they're very knowledgeable in the space and they'll support someone really early. And they're like, yeah, I've been following this person for this much, you know, when they were busking on the street or something like that. And now you can actually prove that you supported them from day one, or, you know? That's very cool. So I'm curious now too, we've been, you know, talking about your platform and the offerings there too. And, you know, we're sitting here or having this chat and you're kind of one of our latest Klima Infinity partners. So I'm curious then, like, when did you first discover Klima and how did this partnership take shape? I connected with Digital Art Charity and we were talking and exchanging ideas and then they mentioned that you guys were doing blockchain carbon credits. And I was like, what? How does, it, how does that work? And uh, I was interested. And I was like, that's awesome. And then um, he introed us to, with, with Klima. And yeah, I loved the idea. I thought it was a great concept. And you guys are pulling off really well. And of course, we want to get involved. <laughs> so we were stoked to get on board with you guys. That's awesome. And I can see on your website here too, now you're flashing the Climate Positive Protocol badge with our Klima Infinity program. 402 tons of CO2 removed with Klima Dow. How important is it to you and to Sankusha to take action on climate and, you know, be a part of that? I think being aware of that, your impact is, is definitely is important. You know, you need to be self-aware of that. And I'd like to think that, you know, the team at Sankusha are self-aware and, and, and want to, you know, do things the right way, I think. So I, I think it's, uh, it's important to me anyway. So, yeah. Because I think from New Zealand, it's a very big thing when it comes to like being sustainable and, you know, always about the environment, like it's probably etched into the New Zealand culture itself. I'm just spitballing here, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I think that has been something that you grew up with, this idea of always giving back to the nature, right? And uh, I really, really think that I'm really, really excited to see like more and more like New Zealand, like startups and companies joining us on this journey and, you know, being carbon neutral. It's something I think it's, 
I, I would say it's almost close to your heart in a sense because I think that's very embedded in your culture as being a, a Kiwi itself, right? I think, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Clean and green being just etched into the identity of New Zealand as a country and her people as well, you know, 100%. So New Zealand really, I guess, does has, have that ethos. I've only lived in New Zealand. I have obviously travelled, but I'm probably just blind to it now. I'm just so used to that. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure, I think. New Zealand does have that, that ethos for sure. So, you know, the next thing I would love to ask, I think you, you, you did kind of say a little bit about the future of Senkusha, but I really want to ask you a little bit more about like, you know, you, you before the show, you actually mentioned that you're actually going to the States. Is there any emerging opportunities that is exciting you in the States or that's coming up very soon that you can share with our listeners? We've got an exciting few weeks, few months coming up. So we've actually just finished our first race for our artist. I think we sold out this morning so that was exciting and uh he, we're finished up with that race we're heading to the u.s tomorrow <laughs> and we are going to be meeting with other founders of the, in the music space and the web3 space I, I won't drop any names yet but you better hear in the next few weeks and um we're also going to nft seattle i'll be speaking on the panel there i uh, can't wait to yeah i'm stoked to be invited up there um there's some great people on the panel and I, I think it's going to be some great conversations coming up then we'll be heading down to san francisco for the crypto convention and linking up some more founders down there and then finishing up in la again can't wait to you know get amongst the american industry a bit more as well and get amongst it yeah so we're really looking forward to scaling up a little bit and and bringing on a a, a bunch more artists that's awesome let's like just say i'm an artist and stuff and I, I get started through this crowdfunding right my question is where does senkusha generate profit from you know i think it's a very, very important thing as well good question <laughs> because yeah obviously we don't take equity from an artist charge the artist at all so we charge a small service fee for people minting originally off our website and then we also have a two percent royalty on trading of NFTs. So that's how I think we should continue and make some profit, yeah. Mm, 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 definitely. Because I d definitely do love the way it's being done. I really do feel like I'm I'm a real investor. Like I'm I'm some label artist trying to sign this guy and like, oh, what, what are the things that I'm, I'm going to spend on him and what's going to happen next and what he intends to do. This is something that I think it's really, really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I think, yeah, we put a lot of effort into, you know, the background of, of, of the artist and everything. And, you know, I think the storytelling is huge, right? You know, if I'm going to invest in someone, like I want to know their story, you learn a lot about someone. And, and then at the end of the day, you invest in, you know, you're, you're investing in people, right? So, yeah, I think that's hugely important. I think I'm looking forward to exploring new ways to do that. I've, I've been brainstorming a lot and working on the schedule and how we're going to do it for, you know, the 10 or 20 artists that we bring on next. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to, you know, tell that story, that narrative of each artist. It's definitely all about the storytelling. It'd be great to see more and more artists come on your platform there and hear from them the difference that you're making with Sankusha. That's great. How can listeners get involved or how can they, you know, stay in the loop with what Sankush is up to and what's next? Definitely follow us on Twitter. We will be posting about it a lot about what we're what we're doing. I think it's Sankush underscore NFT. And I think we'll be actually starting a podcast very soon to bring on artists, music industry specialists and web two, web three to educate people and it's always good to hear from experts in the field about what's going on. You know, I guess get alpha, right? So <laughs> we'll be looking at doing that as well. So you guys can follow our journey through there and join our Discord as well. We uh, we always we're always posting about everything in there. Oh, excellent! Yeah, definitely. You've got a uh, Twitter account, so that's Sankusha uh, underscore NFT, you know, Discord, and their website Sankusha.io. Awesome. Well, yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you guys in person or face-to-face you know, -face at least and appreciate you guys having me on. Likewise, really appreciate it. Bye. All right, cheers. Take care there, Takeshi. Excellent. It was great to connect and chat with Takeshi and learn about his background and the journey Sankusha is on to really transform funding for artists. 
I don't know about you, Riku man, but I really appreciated learning about his transformation from boxer and med school student to taking the plunge on a pretty innovative Web3 startup. Uh, what really stuck with you through that chat there? What really stuck with me was that a lot of startups that we see right now really understands that, you know, being climate positive, it's part of their journey as well. Like, you know, we, we have been, you know, the last few episodes when we are uh, talking to all the different um projects or different partners that came about they were like barely like six months or a year old and they really start to see the importance of being sustainable and not only that it's also great to hear that you know we have a fellow partner shout out to you know digital charity art you know for referring new partners to us as well yeah so that's josh and grace from digital charity art were previous potk guests and that's pretty incredible to realize uh yeah, that they've uh, been able to tell their climate uh, journey and their climate journey to uh, others and kind of make that referral to the Climate Infinity program and to the podcast here too. Yeah, I think I really, really like the idea of being able to, you know, like fun for your, you know, um, artists, like the artists you love, definitely. I think, you know, nowadays, if you look at things, it's always like you waiting for that one viral video on TikTok or Instagram and hopefully it brings you to stardom or or to have enough funding for your, your, um, for your next project. But, you know, with this itself, you really have an opportunity to have um, you know, a group of people who truly believe in your journey and you know, right from the start and you know funding your project uh, funding your passion as you grow so i think that's something that I, i'm really really excited about well look when you are ready to drop that nft i'll get the first uh, one of one <laughs> there from you for sure thank you thank you thank you <laughs> i will sign and deliver it to you in person <laughs> excellent so thank you for tuning in and listening and just want to give you a reminder that we would love it if you can follow and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and if you have a minute it would just be incredible if you could leave a review as well too that's a a little rating uh, depending what platform you're on if you're on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify wherever you're listening it would just mean so much to us if you could give a little rating a review a thumbs up a follow Whatever you'd like to do, we're happy to have you along for this ride and happy to uh, have you as listeners of the Planet Climates podcast. Otherwise, for everything Klima, make sure that you're hitting up Finance, of course, where you can stake bond and most importantly, find a link to that Klima Discord community. So join us and you'll find a great group of climates and plenty of opportunities to contribute and be an active climate too. So we hope you really enjoyed this conversation with Takeshi from Senkusha and thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to saying hello once again on the very next Planet of the Climates.